Hi, I'm Dave Hurrell and today we're here at Loudham Leisure World Nottingham to look at some of the important things you need to check when buying a used motorhome. So let's go and take a look. One of the first things to check is the external condition of the body. Let's take a walk around and look at this example. Look for any dents or scuffs in the bodywork here and this is important on this one because it's aluminium clad. Some coach boats are actually GRP clad and that's a little bit tougher. Check the wheel arches and then moving along the side. Two of the most important areas to check are the roof and the rear panel. Sometimes people drive over that low overhanging trees and there can be damage to the roof so get the dealer to get a ladder or if there's a ladder fitted you can climb up and make sure you inspect the roof thoroughly. The other area, the rear panel, is vulnerable to people reversing into objects and this is one of the main causes of insurance claims in any coach built motorhome. This owner of this previous van here, it's a 2007, has been very clever, he's had a uh, steel rear bumper fitted which protects the lower areas, there's also reversing sensors and a camera. So not only is the rear protected more, you can also see where you're going when you're making that reversing manoeuvre. The next and one of the most important things to do is check the condition of the tyres, both from a legal point of view and also a safety point of view. Don't just look at the depth of the tread, you need to look at some of the information on the sidewall to make sure the tyres are correct for the vehicle. They may have been changed by a previous owner in a used van and this could mean these tires, the tyres that have been fitted are not correct. Two important things and the first one is the year of manufacture. This is a four digit number. Uh, stamped on the sidewall. This one says 1709. That means it was manufactured in the 17th week of 2009. If the tyre is more than about four to six years old, then it really does need changing because the carcass of the tyre can start to break down at this point. The other one is the load rating. You'll find a two digit number on the sidewall or maybe it actually says what the load rating on the tyre is. You need to make sure that that is enough for the overall weight of the vehicle and the axle weight as well. It's vitally important to check that all the technical items in the living area actually do work and work properly. Start with the control panel, make sure that turns on, make sure the pump works, the water pump works. When you turn on you should hear the water pump work either as soon as you turn the switch on or when you lift the tap to let some water out. Look at the lighting, check that all the lights work. Most lights these days are LED powered in, in newer vans, in older vans they might be the old incandescent type, so check that, check every light works. Also while you're at it, look at the locker doors and the drawers, and make sure that they close properly and none of the latches are damaged or broken. Same applies to the blinds, check that the blinds and the fly screens work, these are very vulnerable to becoming broken as well. Make sure the heating and hot water system works as well, uh, both on mains and gas powered too. And also look at the fridge, make sure the fridge is working. This is a large fridge freezer which has actually got automatic energy selection and the cooker. The hob, the oven and the grill. And while you're at it, check its condition, make sure it's clean. This one is actually wonderfully clean, doesn't look like it's really been used very much. But it's important not to have to start scrubbing a cooker as soon as you get the van home. And so to the base vehicle, and it's very important to check that everything on the base vehicle works. In this one we've got cruise control, central locking, electric windows and mirrors, air conditioning, all these things need to be checked as well as the obvious things such as the lights and the wipers. You'll also see, and you'll see this on quite a few used vans, that it has some aftermarket accessories fitted. So we've got an aftermarket stereo system here and also a reversing camera with a monitor that replaces the rear view mirror. Check that both of these operate properly as well. Also check the mileage and as we can see here in this second hand Swift Bolero it's got 21,850 miles on the clock. When you go in and see the dealer make sure you look at the paperwork and make sure all the relevant paperwork corresponds to the mileage that's displayed on the vehicle. And the final thing to do in this section is make sure you take the vehicle out for an extremely good and decent length road test not just five minutes. 
try and look at all different road surfaces and travel on rough roads as well as smooth ones, you get an idea of the cruising speed of the vehicle. You'll also find out whether the conversion rattles a lot. Just bear in mind that all motorhomes rattle in the rear to a greater or lesser extent and driving over rough road surfaces is one of the best ways to check exactly what's rattling in the rear and what may need sorting out. Moisture ingress, and that's really just a fancy term for leaks. And this affects mainly coach-built motorhomes uh, because there are so many more joins in the body for the vehicle to actually leak over time. What happens is the water actually leaks in, it affects the integrity of the structure. Any reputable dealer will actually use a damp meter to check for this before you buy it. It measures both the direct damp in the wall via these two prongs which are applied to the wall and it also uses ultrasound to measure the amount of damp in the framing. Anyway, make sure that you get that damp check done because if you buy a vehicle and you do find it's had damp ingress, then repairs can and often are extremely expensive to have carried out. Payload. One of the most important things is to make sure the motorhome has adequate payload and especially in relation to the amount of storage space you have. It's like your garage at home, given the amount of space you're going to want to fill it. And in this motorhome it has a large garage so you need to know there's going to be adequate payload so you can load this up with confidence and know that you're not overloaded. And if you are, you're going to be illegal on the road. So how is this payload calculated? Well, it's done in various different ways, especially these days. Some converters include the weight of the vehicle in running order, some with fuel and water on board. But whatever happens, the easiest way to discover what the real payload of the, of the vehicle is, is to have it weighed on a public weigh bridge. And this especially is important due to the fact that any accessories fitted will eat into that payload. There's always a public weigh bridge nearby and the cost to weigh a van is about £15. So if you're considering buying privately, it's good to know that it's going to be an easy thing to carry out before you agree to buy the vehicle. So you've decided to buy that vehicle, now's the time to check that all the paperwork is in order. Firstly, you need to make sure that the mileage that's indicated that we looked at earlier in the actual vehicle on the dashboard corresponds with the mileage that's listed in the paperwork, things such as MOTs, etc. Next, you want to know about the service history. Does it have a good service history from day one? Um, and also the terms of the warranty that the dealer is offering. With any motorhome, there are the manuals, and there are a lot of them with a motorhome, far more than any car. You've got the base vehicle and also the conversion manual, plus the manuals that come with all of the different elements that are included in the vehicle cooker, heater and all that type of stuff. And one vital thing to do is to make sure that a history check has been carried out on the vehicle. Companies such as HPI do this and you'll know the vehicle hasn't been badly damaged or written off or listed as stolen. So there you have it. There's some of the most important things to check before you make that final buying decision. There's a great selection of vans here and I've seen a few that I quite like the look of. So I'm off to check a few out. <laughs>